can't think of your name now. Gateway, Dell, and you're going to see systems that are priced really, really low. You're going to look at there. You're going to see these systems that are, you know, 300, 400 bucks, really, really dirt cheap. <clears throat> um, and that's the thing. They're dirt cheap. Uh, and there's, they're dirt cheap for a reason. They don't have everything to it. Um, Microsoft uh, basically has a set of minimum requirements. They say, or what are required, duh, minimum requirements for the system to actually run within reasonable performance. Um, <clears throat> and interesting way they say reasonable, but <clears throat> that's another story too. Uh, with Windows Vista, almost said XP. With Windows Vista, it's a minimum of 512 megabytes of RAM. Now, you go out, you buy an e-machine like this one here. I'm assuming it's probably they're all, what's the difference between e-machine? They're all really the same, in my opinion. Um, they come with just 512 megabytes of RAM. Now, how they get the meter exceed? Yeah, it'll exceed it if you uh, go through and put the additional options on there. But uh, anything you go into a Best Buy or um, Circuit City, uh, pretty much any major computer store, electronic store, you're going to buy one of these that are just really basic. They're going to have the 512 megabytes of RAM. They're going to have the built-in graphics card. And they're going to have the um, uh, Windows Vista Basic on there. And you're going, well, that's, that's the minimum requirements. It should run fine. Well, not really. The general rule of thumb, if you talk to anybody that knows what they're doing, uh, when it comes to computer design, they're going to say, hey, whatever Microsoft recommends, double it. Because if you run what Microsoft says, yeah, it's going to run Windows barely. It's it's going to be a little slow. It's going to be a little sluggish, but it runs. Uh, that was a big thing with XP. Everybody, you know, said, oh, you just need 256 megabytes of RAM to run it. Well, pretty much XP. As soon as you loaded it up, it was running at right around 200 megabytes of memory. It just pretty much eight. It was a little bit less than that. It was right around 200. So that didn't give you much room to put other programs on there. Again, the same thing has happened with these brand new systems that have Vista on them. And as you can guess, with these built-in video cards, this makes it even worse. Because uh, built-in video cards, they use memory, your, your actual RAM, as video memory. And now you're not running at 512, you're running at like 502. I've seen some systems that were running at 450, it was some odd number, it was like 450, 468 uh, megabytes of memory. And that's that's not meeting minimum requirements, in my opinion. That's, that's basically advertising you have 512 megabytes of RAM, but you're not going to be able to use it all. Uh, unless you put in there another graphics card, but then why don't you just buy a better system at that point? So, <clears throat> you couple the already consumed memory from the graphics cards, built-in graphics cards, uh, the basic memory, 512 megabytes, and then you're going to take it even a step worse, and you're going to have the Vista Basic installed on these systems. Now you're going, what's so bad about Vista Basic? It's cheaper. And of course these cheap systems want to have that. Well, there's a key thing here. This Windows Aero Desktop Experience. Ignore the Flip 3D. The Aero Desktop Experience. Now, notice how that's not in Basic. It's in Home Premium and above. And the big deal here is, if I actually click on this start menu see how this is a little transparent see how this is cut away here 
with that basic version, that's not cut away. This is a solid color. And if I unmaximize this screen, you kind of see a little bit behind this here. Windows are transparent too. But in basic, they're not. Whoop de doo is not transparent, whatnot. That's that's kind of a little wow factor with the home premium and above, but this is a good sign that it's actually being handled by the graphics card. Truly being handled by the graphics card. Uh, that's the whole point of the aero interface. To render the user interface with the graphics card. Uh, with the basic version, it's the same thing as what's in XP is all being handled by your processor and your processor is not efficient at rendering graphics it's it's in intended to process you know raw numbers calculations run word it's not designed to you know make things look pretty uh, do transparent effects it, it's not designed for this it's it's designed to be a gen generic processor to handle any task really thrown at it and it just doesn't do graphics good use the graphics card well you just took a whole bunch of processing time off of your computer to avoid rendering these rounded corners these shaded effects uh, that kind of stuff so you're getting additional basically kind of like another processor if you want to think of it that way in your system to help do that Instead of relying on your actual processor to do that. So, you take all that, and then I'm going to show you how it's even worse. They take it even a step further and make it worse. When you buy a Dell, a Gateway, E-Machines, HP, Compaq, you name it, any of the major brands, they come with a ton of trialware. Absolutely worthless programs most people don't even use. Um, it's it's just junk and this is one thing I think is a great move on Apple's behalf I wish uh, more PC makers would take this as a stance to and not put crap on there and I'll just flat out will say this is crap um, it just slows down the systems and eats up more memory right out of the box so these guys they have less than 512 megabytes the graphics are bad all that stuff uh, using tons of processor time already eating up your hard drive time and you have the antivirus software installed already that's eating up more memory fighting for processor time and it's 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 choking it up it's making it slow so they get these systems right out of the box got all those issues on it and of course anybody in their right mind is going to have some kind of antivirus software installed running on their system that's connected to the internet um, any home user that is <clears throat> I recommend any professionals do that as well but that combination there it's 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 just asking for the system to be slow so yeah, you're, you're going to have performance issues right out of the box. Um, and the problem is just these incredibly cheap computers. I mean, they list it right here, the requirements. I mean, what's, what's with this? Cap cap oh, sorry, capable requirements. Sorry. Then they list the additional specs here. For the premium ready, notice how they got the one gigabyte of RAM. Notice how they got, you know, uh, one gigahertz processor, you know, that kind of stuff. This is this is really what you should build a Vista system. Minimum. This is the true minimum specs. I think it should be for anything, any Vista box, uh, not just the basic stuff. We're talking all of it. And you gotta go to Vista premium ready, Vista capable. I wonder how many of these Vista capable systems even have drivers. So, <clears throat> manufacturers need to get their act together on that. Next.